Ah, eyes, the window into the soul, or lack thereof. I'm, I'm not really sure that Mr. Squeegee Feet has a soul. After all, he has squeegees for feet. But still, he needs eyes to see. Unlike the leg and foot rigs, for this rig, I have actually imported the eye meshes into our little rigging playground. We could have done that with the legs and feet too, and I encourage you to do that if you want to when testing out rig ideas. I've done it with the eyes because I think it will make the rigging a little less confusing when we get to our final solution. To start off, we clearly need to have at least one bone each for the eyes to be the children of. So let's add those. And let's rotate both of the eye bones down so that their y-axes are pointing in the same direction as the eyes. And let's position them at the center of each eyeball. To do this exactly, we can use Blender's cursor snapping tools. Select the eye, go into edit mode, and alt right click on one of the center edges to select an edge loop. Press shift S and select cursor to selected from the menu. This snaps the 3D cursor to the average position of the selection, which in this case will be the center of the eye. We could also do this in object mode with just the object selected, but that won't work if, for example, the eyes are part of a larger mesh. Now go back into edit mode on the armature. Select the eye bone, hit shift S, and select selection to cursor. Now the eye bone is positioned exactly at the center of the eye. Now do the same for the other eye. And let's name the eye bones I.L and I.R for the left and right eyes. And finally, let's parent the eyes to the bones. Remember, you need to be in pose mode to do this. Now, if we wanted to, we could just stop here. These two bones could serve as controls for the animator. But I think we can do better. For one thing, a pair of eyes generally both do the same thing. If one eye looks left, the other usually looks left as well. This is because our eyes are wired to both look at the same point in space. But unfortunately, right now our poor little animator would have to manually manage both eyes. So one way that we could improve this rig would be to directly emulate the tracking behavior of eyes by having a target that the eye bones track. In fact, that's a really common and useful way to set up eye controls on characters, so let's do that. Add another bone smack dab in front of the eyes. Let's name it eye target. To make the eye bones track this target, we're going to use constraints. Select the target, and then one of the eye bones, and press Control shift c to bring up the constraints menu. Under the tracking section of the menu, we have a lot of constraints, but there are only two that really do what we want. Damped track and track 2. Both of them behave similarly in that they both will make the bone rotate to track a target, but damped track does it in a smoother, more stable way. There are situations where track 2 may be what you want, but for most situations, damped track is a better choice, so choose damped track. You'll notice that the eye bone immediately snaps to point at the target, and the eye mesh goes along with it. And if we move the target, the eye tracks it. Woohoo! Let's do the same for the other eye. Yay! Now they're both tracking. But this still isn't entirely ideal. For one thing, the eyes have snapped to a slightly cross-eyed position. This is realistic, of course, since they are looking at a point relatively close by, but it may not be how we want our character to look. With this rig setup, we would have to move the target really far away for the eyes to appear like they did before. But that's kind of a nightmare for the animator to manage, since they'll have to zoom way far out every time they want to adjust the eyes. So what if instead, we find a way to keep the eyes uncrossed, no matter how close the eye target is? One obvious way to do this is to create two eye targets that are eye distance apart, and make them children of a master eye target control. Let's give that a try and see what happens. Add two more bones to be the child eye targets, and position them eye distance apart. 
make them the children of the eye target. Now remove the existing constraints from the eye bones, and replace them with a damped track to their respective targets. Yay! Now there is no more cross-eyedness. And we can move the target as close as we want, and no cross-eyedness happens. But there is a problem. What if the head were to turn? We don't have a head bone, but we can still simulate this by selecting the eye bones and rotating them. Yeah, That's terrible. The eyes have gone all weird and cross-eyed again. And this is because the positions of the secondary eye targets are no longer aligned with the eyes. The animator would need to rotate the eye target to stay aligned with the eyes at all times. And guess what? That sucks. It's bad. It's unnecessary work for the animator. They shouldn't have to worry about that. So scrap that. It was a decent idea, but in practice, it turns out it has a lot of problems. And a lot of rigging ideas are like that, actually. Most of my ideas never make it into final rigs, because I find problems with them in the playground phase. That's normal, and that's fine. The important thing is that you don't get so married to an idea that you ignore other solutions that might be better. So let's look for a better solution. What, fundamentally, do we want these eye bones to do? What limitation are we trying to impose on them? Well, we want them to stay parallel to each other. Or, in other words, we want them to have the same rotation. Well, heck, there's an easy way to enforce that. A copy rotation constraint. They can't have different rotations if one of them is forced to copy the rotation of the other. So one way we could do this is to have one of the eyes track the target, and have the other eye copy the rotation of the first. But we'll run into problems with that, too, because then both eyes will look off to the side when the eye target gets close. So what if instead we had both eyes copy the rotation of a third bone that tracks the target? Then we could place that third bone in the middle, so that it doesn't shift strangely when the eye target gets near. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Let's do it. Clear out the stuff we just did by deleting the extra eye targets and clearing out the constraints. Now duplicate one of the eye bones and move it smack in the middle of the eyes. Name it Mind's Eye. Heh <laughs> Mind's Eye. Now add the copy rotation constraint to the eye bones, making them copy the rotation of the Mind's Eye bone. Now when we rotate the Mind's Eye bone, the other two rotate with it. Cool. Now we just have to make the Mind's Eye bone track the eye target, and... Voila! Moving the eye target around now makes the eyes track it, but they stay parallel to each other instead of being cross-eyed. Nifty. There's still one last thing that we could do though, and that is to let the animator also animate the eyes individually on top of all of this. Do you remember how to do that? If something is automated, but we still want the animator to be able to animate on top of that automation, what do we do? We add parents and automate the parents instead. So let's duplicate the eye bones to create some parents, and let's scale them down a bit so we can tell the difference between them and the eye bones. Now let's make the eye bones the children of those. And let's remove the eye bones constraints. And thankfully, when you duplicate bones, they take their constraints with them, so the parents already have the copy rotation constraints on them. But if they didn't, then we would add those at this point. So now we can move the eye target around. And we can also rotate the eyes manually, if, for example, we wanted to make the character cross-eyed. Lastly, let's lock the translation axes on the eye bones, just so that the animator doesn't accidentally pull the eyes out of their sockets. And let's align the eye target so that Z-axis is up. And that's it! We now have a pretty decent eye rig setup.